Hello, my name is Dr. Brandon Hayes-Latin. I'm a medical oncologist, but I also have the privilege of serving as the senior medical advisor to Livestrong. Uh, in this week's blog, we're talking about fertility issues among cancer patients. And we asked you for some of your questions, um, and several of them were forwarded along to me to uh, help try to help uh, provide some answers. Uh, the first one is, can chemotherapy or radiation uh, push a woman into menopause? Uh, the short answer to that is yes. Uh, different therapies, either chemotherapy or radiation or a combination, can damage ovaries. Um, and ovaries are responsible for producing eggs, which leads to fertility, uh, but also for producing estrogen that leads to menstrual cycling. Um, chemotherapy or radiation can cause damage to ovaries that can either be immediate, meaning that uh, periods, menstrual periods may stop shortly after exposure to chemotherapy, uh, or delayed, meaning that the time course of when a woman might have entered menopause may come earlier in life. And damage to ovaries can either be temporary or permanent. So in some cases, a woman may have a temporary uh, stop of menstrual periods, uh, or in other cases, that may be permanent and there may be early menopause. A second question has to do with, uh, on the male side, uh, sperm counts. Um, and the question is, my doctor said that sperm counts can grow uh, after some time after treatment. Is that true? So yeah, so just like uh, in a female um, uh, gamete, the ovary can be damaged by chemo or radiation, the same thing can happen in a male. And the ability to produce sperm can be reduced or even, in some cases, eliminated. And again, that can be either or temporary or permanent. Um, in most cases, uh, it's not permanent and can increase over time. In fact, even in highest dose chemo and radiation therapy like bone marrow transplant, some males will regain their ability to produce sperm. Uh, the easiest way to know what uh, the sperm uh, count and quality is is to do what's called a semen analysis where a sperm sample is given um, and can be analyzed under the microscope for sperm number and mobility and other characteristics to determine um, how healthy the, the uh, sperm count is. There's a related question uh, about how young a male can be to bank sperm uh, or uh, how young a female can be to bank eggs. Uh, what are if you are prepubescent? So the standard fertility preservation options that exist in, that include sperm banking for males and embryo cryopreservation for females <coughs> do require that uh, uh, the cancer patient has gone through puberty. There are uh, potential options for younger patients. So for the male side, that would be testicular tissue uh, freezing and for a female, ovarian tissue freezing. Uh, these are largely considered experimental um, and it would be something to talk to your doctors about uh, if you're working with a young uh, prepubescent cancer patient. And then the last question uh, is, is there a chance that chemotherapy can cause genetic mutations or birth defects? Um, do cancer treatments affect your DNA? That's a bit of a complicated question because uh, the second question, do cancer treatments affect DNA, is yes. That's actually how cytotoxic chemotherapy works, is by killing cells as they're dividing, affecting the way its DNA works. But the DNA that your question is really asking about is germline DNA. It's the sort of DNA that you would pass on. There have been several studies that look at uh, genetic mutations or birth defect rates in cancer survivors, patients who've previously been exposed to chemotherapy or radiation. And when children are born for, from cancer survivors like that, uh, the largest studies to date have shown that there has not been a problem. There's been no increase in the rate of uh, sporadic uh, germline mutations or birth defects compared to the general population. So thank you very much for your questions. Uh, keep them coming, and uh, we'll see you online.